When these guys approached me um, a couple weeks ago, I just thought it was a really cool uh, combination of design, which I love, uh, design in any, any kind of medium, and food. And uh, I really wanted to be a part of this talk. Um, I just want to tell you a quick story. About seven years ago, um, I went, I mean, I mean, I used to browse Nicholas Hoare chapters for cookbooks. I'm a very visual person. I need visuals. And when I pick up a cookbook, I always start at the back and go forward for some reason. So when I was going through this one cookbook, I, halfway through I saw a picture of this tuna tartare. I loved it, I closed it, and I brought the book home. And um, about a month later I picked it up and I started from the front, and I came across this embarrassing photograph <laughs> in my cookbook. So, I mean, this is a chef, Ludo Lefebvre, from LA, and I guess he's trying to uh, say that he's a fisherman, and he went into the ocean and hand-plucked these <laughs> two, two fish. So I was really disgusted with myself that I bought it. Um, I wanted to get my money back, but there were some ears and couldn't get it back. But a couple months ago, I heard his name. And he's kind of gone through a rite of passage in, in a way, and he's doing a really cool food truck in LA right now. Really humble food. He's, he's French, he's French trained. He's doing little fried chicken with uh, Herbes de Provence, Herbes de Provence kind of seasoning. So I was really happy to see that you know, this, this guy that was very ego, very image driven is now doing a humble food truck. But I think that's where food's going. Um, not just down in the States, but here in Canada and also here in, in, in Ottawa. I have a friend who is part of the Greater Good Collective here and there's a, there's a, a phrase I'm using a lot lately when I talk about Ottawa because I think there's some cool things happening in Ottawa. They said that Ottawa isn't a place that people um, come to, but it's a place that people come back to. I think there's a great balance here in Ottawa. Uh, we're 20 minutes away from farmland and, and, and open green space. I think it's a great, um, a great statement that's, that, that's going on. Um, I did my home about uh, two years ago. I have a 100-year-old uh, row house in the Glebe. And I met this architect, uh, Andrew Reeves, who was based out of Toronto and did some work here in Ottawa. And so I met him. So this is the front of my house, and it's a 100-year-old uh, brick home, and I bought this, we sourced out this modern door. So I just love that juxtaposition of the old and the new. That's our upstairs, that's the main floor, that's the kitchen. So really that old and that new, that combination of, of both, I think is really important. Andrew loved Ottawa so much that he moved his family here, so they're living here now, because he thought there was lots of really, really cool people, really cool things going on here in Ottawa. I just want to tell you um, brief, a quick story about how, or my history, how I got to uh, where I am right now, which is unemployed, by the way. <laughs> um, but <laughs> it feels pretty good in the summer, actually. <laughs> but I started at Domus Cafe. Uh, I hope all of you have been to Domus Cafe. I think it's an institution here. John Taylor is the owner, chef. And about 15 years ago, that's me, actually, and John. Um, John was the first guy to have farmers on his payroll. I mean, uh, you had some local blueberries on your, 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 your granola this morning from the Rochon family stall. Um, you know, it's, it's local is, is, is much the buzz these days, but I think we have to move past that and not state that. I mean, it should just be a given that it's local these days and let's just move on and mature. But did some great things, worked with John for about four years. And at that time in Ottawa, there wasn't a lot going on. There, there was no other restaurants that really inspired me. So I went away to Toronto. I worked with uh, Susu Lee, who's world-renowned, he was one of the first guys that did fusion, kind of fusing um, two cuisines, two ethnicities uh, in food, or, th or sometimes three, on the plate, and really did it really well. Worked with Susu for about four years, went on to work with David Lee at, at Splendido, he now has Note Bene, and David Lee's kind of like an amped up John Taylor. Um, bigger restaurant, bigger staff, so similar chefs, but learned a lot from him as well. And then I went on to work with Ki, at his restaurant, um, and he's a Malaysian guy. Uh, really cool guy, really great chef, 
Um, Key went on to open Oddfellas and now owns Parts and Labor in Toronto. But Key doesn't cook anymore, he's part of Castor. Castor Design is a really cool um, design collective in, in Toronto, doing some really cool work. Castor, a design firm from Toronto, has worked on interiors, furniture, lighting, public art commissions, and open restaurants. Founders Key Young and Brian Roche's appreciation for food and music inspired them to open Parts and Labor, a space combining fine dining and punk shows. I'm Maddie Matheson, the chef of Parts and Labor. I used to work with Key and Brian at their old restaurant, Oddfellows. It was full of Castor stuff with one long table and very expensive chairs. It was a fucking party. Yeah, it did turn into that a little bit. Well, with the Winnebago, the lax management style, and the free drinks. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> right, the Winnebago. We'll get back to that. I met Brian at my restaurant at a time, probably in 2006. I ended up working at Oddfellows, getting to know Brian and Key, and then that turned into me working on um, the demolition and a little bit of the construction of parts and labor. When we first conceived that idea of wanting to open up something bigger than Oddfellows, we saw the space and it was a uh, hardware store, hence for the name Parts and Labor. I just like the words Parts and Labor. I like the way it looks together. We wanted to have a space where live music can be seen and uh, the idea of a beer hall, right? That's what the big tables. We like to express the space. Parts and Labor's dining room is a clean, industrial, open space with eight communal tables. It's the complete opposite to the downstairs live venue, the shop. Oh, it's tiny. With low ceilings. It's not great sound. Had some amazing shows down there. I think that represents Castro quite well. You know, the, the, the low, low, and the high, high. It used to be the best, like people from upstairs and then a punk show and then they have to use the same washroom, so it was like mixing that crowd up. We like the rock and roll scene, the punk, and uh, we like fine material, you know, high-end stuff. In 2009, Castro was invited by Toronto's interior design show to be a featured exhibitor. Like, our angle is always, like, do something kind of crazy. That's what we've been kind of put into, so we have to do that. Castor turned a 75 Winnebago into a party day, complete with a wood-burning fireplace and a rad record collection. When we did the Winnebago at IDS, the opening night party was really good. It was amazing. I had like a country band play out front. People were quite upset that that was our booth, which was funny, because everybody else spent like seventy, eighty thousand dollars on their booth, and we pull up with this four thousand dollar Winnebago. That was a pretty good night. For me personally, I think one of the proudest moments that I can remember was actually driving the Winnebago out of uh, the IDS show. We've been through all those, quite a few of those IDS shows, and there's so much waste involved. And we managed to drive out of uh, the whole show without leaving any waste behind. It was a great accomplishment as far as design goes. We brought in something that can be reused. That's why I think uh, being part of Castro is uh, really liberating for me. I mean, that's just the stuff that's going on in, 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 in Toronto and other, in Montreal and other, um, you know, cities like, like that. So, I mean, I was really happy with going to Toronto and being inspired by that sort of uh, way of thinking, not just in terms of food, but also design. So brought that back, moved back. I mean, I got burnt out, uh, to be honest with you. And I moved back. I took some time off and spent some time at my cottage, which is just past Armprior. And with all that experience, I, I had the, the, this, the confidence in my skill set to take on my first restaurant, which is Restaurant 18. So, I mean, Restaurant 18 looks like a castle. It's a beautiful grand restaurant, very high end, you know, lots of foie gras, lots of lobster. Uh, that's a dish that we're known for, a black cod. So I was there for about uh, three years, and then I took on Social. Social is about a pitching wedge away. It's a short walk and owned by the same owners. Uh, Similar old and new, got the, the, the old stone walls uh, mashed with the modern kind of uh, aesthetic. A large restaurant and uh, did some really cool things there. And then took on Side Door, uh, which is below 18. Uh, and before I did that, I went away, like was mentioned earlier, I went to Thailand. And I was taught uh, for about a week by a 60-year-old Thai woman, Le learned some really cool curries. Um, then went down to Melbourne, Australia, which has a very vibrant dining scene, incredible dining scene. 
That's a lobster curry outside door. And that's the tacos that we're doing that, that uh, are pretty cool. They're, so that's a, that's a fusion of, of, a, of a, a Mexican taco with some Asian flavors. That's a Chinese barbecue pork taco. Um, and we do some other really cool things down there as well. But after six years, I just, I just found that at 18 and social and side door, I wasn't cooking for the people that I wanted to cook for. Um, I wanted to have a restaurant that, that, um, that people would come once, once a week, twice a week, because of the price point or because of the feel of the environment. So I left the restaurants and um, I didn't know what I was going to do. I, d I, didn't, uh, I had some, some opportunities and I remember walking by Mellow's one day. And I mean, I, mean I, always, I always loved old diners. I always loved counter service. Uh, I love sitting at the, at the bar of a restaurant. I think if I have to sit in a table, it's kind of boring for me. I'd rather sit up by the bar. Um, and I'd press my nose to, to Mellow's and I noticed that they're closed Sunday through Wednesday at 1.30 in the afternoon. So I approached, the, Mellow's changed hands about a year ago and I approached Gary and Martin. They're both from Montreal. And I approached them. Um, sat down and had a meeting at Mellow's and, and proposed this pop-up restaurant idea. And they hadn't heard of it before and they didn't know what I was talking about and they said no <laughs> at the start. But I persisted uh, and we worked out a deal and uh, we did it. And uh, it was, it's, it's been received really well. Uh, I mean, we, we, we could have fallen flat on our face, but um, we had a great front of the house, we had a great back of the house. And um, just the old and the new. So that new philosophy that I, that I found with food is just, just doing really honest food and in a kind of heritage environment. And it and just worked really, really well. I can remember one, one day, it was a packed restaurant, and I was shaving some Parmesan cheese over a pasta. And I remember uh, out on my peripheral, this guy dropped his fork on his plate, stood straight up in his chair, and was, was coming over to me. And I thought he was going to say something, you know, something bad or something wrong. And he just said, why can't people do more food like this? And I was really happy to hear that. Uh, because if you, take, if you take one dish, say uh, this pork shank ragu that we were doing, that's one dish at restaurant 18, or that's one dish at social. But if you take that dish out of those restaurants and you put it into a Mellow's environment, it's a completely different dish. It's like going to Ikea and buying a chair. You, you don't really want to buy that chair because a million other people have that chair. But if you take that chair out of Ikea and put it in your home, it's a little bit more acceptable. <laughs> but this is just some of the, the, the food that we've done at Mellow's. That's Mellow's um, before the pop-up, the way it operated. Uh, that's Mellow's during the pop-up. My sister's a florist, so we just got some flowers and some candles at Ikea. These glasses are from Ikea. Um, but I love this. This is a, a, a Pim's cocktail. And I just love the way this looks on this old countertop. That's the, that's the, the uh, bar counter. Even this, these are fish tacos with the old counter. I just, I just love that. You have to go through a rite of passage in a way. You have to, you have to go through uh, situations in your life, whether it's professional or personal, make mistakes, learn from those, and then go on to some successes. And I, I really think this Mellow's experiment for me um, was kind of the anti-18, let's say. I love 18, 18's a great restaurant. Um, but I really wanted to kind of undercompensate and do something like Mellow's and then take that experience, that vibe. Like it, I, I, I don't think I'll ever be able to recreate it, but that vibe that we experienced at Mellow's I think was really special. Uh, it, was, it was very humble. It was very honest cooking and I'd love to, and I will use that uh, foundation um, onto the next venture that I'll do uh, hopefully soon here in Ottawa. And another thing that I loved is just the, that the food, there was no smoke and mirrors. There was no elaborate presentations. I was using the diner plates, the old diner plates, and it was really stripped down food and it really let the food stand for, for what it was. It was, I mean, we were making our own fresh pasta. We were cracking our own lobsters. And the price point was at a, at a, at a point where we could make money, but it was also accessible. Um, and I really liked that, that notion of stripping the food down to its bare essentials. I mean, a steak frit was a steak frit. Um, I mean, there's been some restaurants that have opened up here in Ottawa lately. I won't give any names, but you walk into the restaurant and you, you ask why. You know, why did they just open this up? I've been, I feel like I've been here before. I feel like I've been to this restaurant 10 years ago. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's really important to 
when you, when you do something, in my, in my case a restaurant, that people should walk in and say, geez, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, the latest restaurant that I'm in love with is Union. I'm not sure if you guys have been to Union. But I mean, I, I walked into this space and I just, I just fell in love with it because it's just hyper creativity. Uh, they got a, a local renowned tattoo artist to do a mural on the wall. Uh, I just fell in love with the space. They really put a lot of work into the lighting. There's no pictures of the lighting here, but there's just stunning lighting. So I, I totally suggest you guys check out this space. And the food's pretty good too. <laughs> I work with Josh, who owns the Whale's Bone. And I love what Josh does. Uh, he has a wholesale uh, sustainable fish um, depot right behind the bus station. And he doesn't take on uh, a supplying partner unless he likes their story. The story has to be really profound, really, really special, because he thinks that that adds to the overall sum of its parts. And I think, uh, you know, as a result of the Mellows experience, I really want to create a restaurant that tells a story um, through, through time, through age, the old and the new and the then and the now. Yeah. I know with the chef must be tough because your food's around all the time and it's the same with design. Yeah. But how do you find that balance in your life? Yeah, it's it's tough. I find I find I'm sure it's the same with design. Uh, cooking um, for me is a lifestyle. You know, I, I don't have any off switch really. Like whether I'm whether my mother's cooking for me at the cottage or or whether I'm at a friend's place or whether I'm out for dinner, I feel I'm always working, always. But um, that's why I like Ottawa. I mean. I, Ottawa has a really nice balance, I find. It's not like Toronto where, it's, where it's, it just seems to be a rat race and it's open till, till 1 or 2. Uh, Ottawa gets a little sleepy around 11, which is nice. Um, you know, if you want to get, get, get outside of the city, uh, whereas in Toronto it's two hours outside, maybe more. In Ottawa it's 20 minutes. Um, I just find Ottawa's got a really nice balance. That's why I choose to, to be here and hopefully find balance within within being here in Ottawa. With you uh, potentially opening up a new, new place and the, the wonderful chef-owned uh, community. Yeah, um, which is growing. That's building in Ottawa. I love it, yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Because with the rising cost of food, you're trying to keep the quality high. Yeah. We've got to go out and eat because we just have to. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, what's going to happen? Yeah, it, it's, it's so hard to make money in restaurants, first of all. And it's, it's very hard to, to own a restaurant, to, to run a food service operation, because when you think about it, people, the public want the food very quickly, they don't want to pay very much for it, and they want it to be really good. And that's a, that's a big challenge. Um, we're we're going to have to pass along that cost to, to the clients, and they're going to have to be more understanding to it. I mean, look at oil, like to, to fry a, a little piece of wild salmon for a, for a fish taco. It's, it's so, so expensive. Um, but what I've discovered through Mellows, I think, is that, you know, as, as a young chef, you always, you, you want to do some crazy stuff and you think it's all about the food. But what I've come to realize is that it's not about the food. It's about the experience of going out. It's about the space. It's about the service. It has to be really good, honest service. Um, artisanal drinks, I think, where we were trying to do these really cool drinks, you know, egg whites shaken over a bourbon sour. So a small cocktail list, um, and the food. You know, I, I, don't ha I, I don't have to use lobster anymore. I don't have to use foie gras. I don't have to use truffles. I, I've done all that. I think the food has to be good. I think it has to be humble. I think Murray Street's doing a great job at that, using this, the, the head to tail kind of mentality, using everything. Um, another way you can cut back on cost is not using, I hope there's no Cisco reps here, but using a Cisco <laughs> kind of company. You know, I really like um, I'm going to the farmer still. I like going to um, uh, that farmer, shaking the hand. And then you cut down on the cost as well. I don't mind picking up stuff for the restaurant. So I enjoy doing that. So cutting out that bigger middleman as well, I think. Um, with all the allergies nowadays, do you find when you create food, it's limiting or challenging? Or I guess my real question is when someone comes in with an allergy. Frustrating sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't hate them. I hate vegetarians more than I hate people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Totally kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. <laughs> uh, um, no, I've, uh, no, it, it's 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 a challenge, and I like to to do food on the fly, anyways. Um, and it's inspiring, you know, to to cook something for someone that has some aversions. You know, at 18, we used to do a lot of 
behind tasty menus and we'd write them on the fly because the server would go to the table and say, are there any dislikes or any allergies or aversions? So we'd come up with a menu on the fly. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a little bit frustrating because sometimes you have this great product or this great dish that you just really want them to try but they can't. That's the only time it's frustrating. But I, I, don't, I don't mind cooking for vegetarians or people with allergies. Is there anything you know, that sort of surprised you as far as uh, how the old and the new work? I know you were using plates and things, but was there anything that just sort of popped out all of a sudden? Yeah, um, lots of things. I mean, I, I, I can derive lots of things from that experience. But, I mean, we can always learn from, I mean, I, as a chef in a kitchen, I think I can learn as much from a dishwasher or as much from a, from a first year culinary student than I can from, not as much, but I can learn things from them. Uh, and same thing going into a Mellow's kitchen. I learned so many really cool things that they had that they, like for example, they had this really cool little water spout with this great little steel gooseneck and, you, and this, you just turn the water on and you didn't have to bring your pot to the sink or just, just little things like that. You know, the way the line was set up, which had, had been that way for probably 30 years. You know, I re and I really loved it and I really fell in love with the counter service I always loved, but I fell in love with the booth configuration. I'm not sure if you guys know the booth configuration, but there are all these booths that, that, are about, that have a wall that are about this high. And, you know, there's twos and there's fours, but I just watched people interact. And it was kind of like a, like a communal table, but not. And it made people talk to each, I don't know, just engage with, with, with each other and put their cell phones down and talk to the person next to them. So I really fell in love with the, the booth configuration and the counter service. Thanks, guys. That's it.